Well, the purpose of this institute is to provide a haven for independent minds. That's you. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down the most entertaining and influential feature films that had general releases in 2023. We're including features that had festival premieres the previous year, but we're leaving off documentaries. This is the bucket where our pee freezes, and uh, yeah, that's it. Number 10, John Wick Chapter 4. I'm afraid you've come a very long way for nothing. Yeah. John Wick has topped itself with each passing movie, although we can't imagine another sequel surpassing Chapter 4. At just under three hours, Chad Stahelski's film throws everything it has at the audience and titular character. Yet it never feels overstuffed. Each scene is draped in atmospheric cinematography, elegant backdrops, and action constantly finding new ways to innovate. While we joke about how John is practically invincible, we feel every blow he takes with each set piece weighing down on him more. She's alive. Such is life. Can you imagine the acceptance, the defiance? Today is not the day you will die. Of that, I am sure. By the time we reach the final lap of this breathless marathon, we're legitimately concerned that mortality has finally caught up to him. That mix of realism and over-the-top spectacle has made John Wick an action staple, Chapter 4 being the franchise's definitive entry. Nothing personal, John. We're even now. Yeah. Number 9, Blackberry. Did they buy the phone? So, we got good news and bad news. 2023 delved into the fascinating backstories of several products, including Air Jordan. Blackberry was the most surprising in more ways than one. Not only were we caught off guard by just how funny Matt Johnson's film can be, but we severely underestimated the impact that BlackBerry had on the mobile world. That was the worst product pitch I've ever seen in my life. You guys don't stand a chance out there. You need me. Part of that might be because the iPhone has essentially swiped its competitor's legacy from our consciousness. The brand may be defunct, but Glenn Howerton's cutthroat performance as Jim Balsillie will stick with you like the sound of a BlackBerry keyboard typing away. Jay Baruchel also turns in some of his best work as Mike Lazaridis, who loses himself in a sea of corporate greed and a reluctance to see the bigger picture. Yeah, okay, it's not us, Jim, it's the carrier. Verizon is doing something weird. Okay, well, I'm about to do something weird if you don't fix this, now! Number eight. Past Lives. How do you grieve what you never had? This question is top of mind throughout Celine Song's Past Lives, the year's most mature and nuanced romance. Greta Lee delivers a Best Actress-worthy performance as Nora, a married woman who reunites with her childhood sweetheart. Although a love triangle is at the center, Past Lives avoids conventional pitfalls. Is he attractive? I think so. He's really masculine in this way that I think is so Korean. While we empathize with both men in Nora's life, we know there's only one practical way for this story to conclude. No matter how you're hoping for things to turn out, it's impossible not to experience a sense of loss upon arriving at the inevitable resolution. Whether or not Nora makes the right choice, it's the what-if factor that will continue to eat away at her and us. 12 Number 7, Talk to Me. You can be honest. I hate being around him. It's so depressing. Premiering in 2022 at the Adelaide Film Festival before a wide release theatrically in 2023, this Australian horror picture harkens back to W.W. W. Jacobs' classic short story, The Monkey's Paw. Instead of granting wishes, though, the sinister hand at the forefront of this film is more like a needle. After one hit, it's a slippery slope that can leave you possessed. As soon as she lets it in, it cannot go for more than 90 seconds. Am I might clear? What happens after 90 seconds? Don't want to stay. The allegory might be on the nose, but Talk To Me executes its genuinely creepy premise with haunting imagery, utterly convincing performances, and some of the finest practical effects that modern horror has to offer. Brothers Danny and Michael Phillip, who make a riveting transition from YouTube to feature film, infusing their love for the genre into every shot. A hand to hold can be a source of comfort, but always be cautious of what's on the other end. Have any of you guys still been seeing stuff? Number 6, The Holdovers. I had you guys stuck with babysitting duty this year. How'd you manage that? 
Oh, I don't know. I suppose I failed someone who richly deserved it. School is the last place anybody wants to be over the holidays. Unless you're an academic Grinch like Paul Giamatti's Mr. Hunnam. Even his Christmas is spoiled, though, by the presence of Dominic Sessa's Angus, a student with no home to return to. Divine Joy Randolph rounds out one of the year's most memorable trios in The Holdovers, which meticulously captures the look and tone of a 70s dramedy from the studio logos onward. Presto, Cherry's Jubilee. <laughs> Ooh. Shouldn't it just okay. go out? The Vietnam War era backdrop sets a bleak tone for a film that explores isolation, pessimism, and other feelings that the holidays are prone to summon. At the same time, Alexander Payne has made a warm Christmas classic bringing out the humanity of the holiday spirit in unexpected places. I was right. This is why I hate parties. That was a disaster. Total disaster. <laughs> Number 5. Godzilla Minus One yeah! Godzilla Minus One excels where many recent entries to the series have fallen short. Takashi Yamazaki delivers on the kaiju carnage presenting the most intimidating incarnation of Godzilla in a while. Even more impressive, Yamazaki has made a monster picture where we actually care about the human characters. <laughs> Ryunosuke Kamiki gives a heartbreaking performance as a former kamikaze pilot who survived World War II, but is still fighting an internal war as he struggles to accept happiness. Yamazaki returns to the franchise's roots, reminding audiences that the 1954 classic started as an allegory for the atomic bomb. Godzilla Minus One builds upon that theme with a story of survivor's guilt and moments of legitimate terror, producing a war movie first and a monster movie second. Godzilla. Number 4. Killers of the Flower Moon That's how you are. I don't know what she said, but it must have been Indian for handsome devil. The only thing more shocking than the injustice at the core of this epic crime drama is how the Osage murders have widely gone overlooked until recently. Martin Scorsese initially conceived this adaptation of David Grant's nonfiction book with Leonardo DiCaprio leading as Tom White, the agent investigating the conspiracy. Oh, I was uh, sent down from Washington, D.C. to see about these murders. Hmm. Huh. See, see what about them? Killers of the Flower Moon isn't a whodunit, however. It's a who didn't do it, leading to DiCaprio instead playing Ernest Burkhart a pathetic lackey whose affection for his Osage wife is outweighed by his loyalty to his corrupt uncle. Robert De Niro is chillingly effective in the subtlest ways. But Lily Gladstone gives the film's best performance as a woman slowly accepting the betrayal happening under her nose. Once again, Scorsese has defined the term masterpiece. Number 3. Barbie. I'm no longer on tiptoes. That's okay. Let me see. <gasps> Flat feet! Barbie shattered the long, outdated studio mentality that films aimed at female audiences can't gross over a billion dollars. Just as game changing, Greta Gerwig prompted a rethinking of what a film based on a popular toy line can be. Barbie pulls off a seemingly impossible balancing act embracing the brand while calling out every criticism, being commercial while still being auteur-driven, employing a meaningful message without eclipsing the comedy, appealing to younger demographics while proving more fun for adults. Thoughts of death? Thoughts of death! Is that a problem? Oh. Much like how Barbie can be anything, Gerwig has made a film that works on every level, venturing into bold new territory along the way. Throw in a pitch-perfect cast including Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling, and Barbie was 2023's most unexpected stepping stone in the evolution of cinema. Is it Ken? Ken's just a really good friend. And this is my dream house. It's Barbie's dream house. It's not Ken's dream house, right? <laughs> right, as always. Number 2. Oppenheimer Niels, meet J. Robert Oppenheimer. What's the J stand for? Nothing, apparently. You were at my lecture. You ask the only good question. From one half of Barbenheimer to another, Oppenheimer marks another tour de force from Christopher Nolan, delivering what might be his best-looking and best-sounding film to date. It's what's below the surface that sticks with us, however. Nolan accomplishes what few storytellers can, making a film about the atomic bomb where the creators, science, and moral complexities are just as engrossing as the explosion. We've all heard about Einstein and Ziller's letter to Roosevelt warning him the Germans could make a bomb, and I know what it means for the Nazis to have a bomb. But I don't. It's not your people they're hurting into camps. 
Killian Murphy obliterates his underrated status as J. Robert Oppenheimer, whose determination to build the bomb sets off several additional explosions, internally and politically. To discuss every performance would take longer than the movie itself, but Robert Downey Jr. deserves Best Supporting Actor consideration for his imposing portrayal of Louis Strauss. Destroyer of Worlds? Debatable. Savior of the theatrical experience? Certainly. After the war, he was world-renowned, the great man of physics, and I was determined to get him to run the Institute. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Anatomy of a Fall. Sandra Hüller shines in a mystery murder where the courtroom is more intense than the alleged crime scene. When he commences to se crier dessus, to se reprocher des trucs, moi je préfère mon allié. Et quand ça arrivait, tu peux pas me dire qui était le plus énervé des deux? Non. Quand tu dis que tu préférais t'en aller, est-ce que le jour où ton père est mort, c'est ce qui s'est passé? Poor things. Yorgos Lanthimos's most visually and thematically involving film yet. You were in my son. What? Evil Dead Rise. A bloody good time for the whole family, assuming the whole family is into deadites. Mom? Mommy's with the maggots now. Asteroid City. Wes Anderson's wonderful space oddity. You're not here. We're not there. The car exploded. Come get the girls. The car exploded? Parts of the car exploded itself, yes. Come get the girls. I'm not the chauffeur. I'm the grandfather. Where are you? Asteroid City, Farm Route 6, Mile 75. Come get the girls. I have to stay here with Woodrow. The Boy and the Heron. Hayao Miyazaki's meditation on life, death, and the next journey. Mahito. So, you made it. Mother. Have a seat. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse There remains an assumption that if a movie is animated, it must be for the kitty crowd. With Across the Spider-Verse, Miles Morales responded, Nah, I'm gonna do my own thing. We'd say that Across the Spider-Verse pushes the boundaries of animation, but the truth is that animation has no boundaries. Rather, this film pushes forward to unexplored territory, throwing out the rulebook in the process. I am the vulture, the pinnacle of man's genius. You're not my vulture. Not just the rulebook for what's expected from animation, but what's expected from a Spider-Man movie. At the same time, to say that the filmmaker's love for Spidey is on display in every frame would be an understatement. The film is Spider-Sense overload, serving a visual feast so bountiful that you almost forget another course is coming. That said, we are hungry for the next chapter. I'm Spider-Man. No one can take that away from me. Unbelievable. Come back to your nemesis! Don't escape! Your costume's too tight in the back, by the way. What are your favorite movies of 2023? List your top 10 in the comments. All those grateful, powerful women who owe their wonderful lives to Barbie. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.